Well, hello. I'm making this video for Final Cut Pro 10 users. Uh, this is, you can see here, the latest version as of March 2019, version 10.4.5. Those of you who want to use wide gamut footage, Rec 2020 footage on a Rec 709 timeline, specifically for you Panasonic GH5 and GH5 users, uh, S users out there who shoot in HLG. I, for one, shoot everything in 10-bit 4K 30p HLG, which is Rec 2020. There's a lot of confusion on how to deal with that, so let's get started on what settings you need. Now you can see here I've got a new library that I created, still untitled, and after you create your new library, you go over here and you'll see this modify. It says standard. That already tells you it's a Rec 709 timeline, but we click modify and we can see we only have two choices. Standard means Rec 709. This is what most people's displays on their computers or smartphones or whatever, they have a standard display that cannot display HDR. And so that's why, if you're like me, uh, you want to have the widest audience available for your footage, so you're going to want to export to Rec. 709. Even though YouTube will accept wide gamut, you can upload Rec. 2020. That's what wide gamut HDR is, HLG, in other words, it's Rec. 2020. You can upload this to YouTube, and YouTube will automatically convert it to Rec. 709 if the, it senses the display is not HDR. However, do you want to trust YouTube to convert that footage for you, or would you rather just export directly to Rec. 709 and you have full control. I mean, that's that's what I do. I'd rather do that than allow YouTube to uh, convert it because, well, <laughs> most people don't have an HDR display anyway. So what we're going to show you now is with it set to a standard Rec. 709 library. Now in the library, I have an event. Here's my event. And inside the event, you can see I made a project. And I have two clips straight out of my GH5. These are, as you can see in the RGB parade over here, Rec 2020 footage. And it says it over here, Rec 2020 HLG, it's 4K at 29.97p, my audio 48 kilohertz. Now, when we bring the, before I show you the footage, actually I'll click on my, my project here. When you create a new project, you will not be able to choose wide gamut. Why not? Why is this pop-up grayed out? It's because, as we just mentioned, the library you created is standard, which means it's locked to Rec. 709. And that's why it says it's, it's locked. You can't choose it. And so the project is where you put the clips down here in the timeline. The timeline is your project. So this timeline is locked to Rec. 709. All right? But if you click on the clip, you can see that the individual clips are, in fact, Rec. 2020, just as we saw before. And if you look at the clip, you can see, even though I properly exposed to the right, I used my zebras, I did not have anything blown out. It looks like the window is blown out. And you can see that, uh, especially if we, if we go down here, you can see normally Rec. 709 in the RGB parade, we're, focus your attention on this part right here, right? It goes between 0 and 100. And we're seeing that the levels are above that. And so it looks a bit blown out, even though when I shot it, it was not blown out. And that's because uh, the screencast you're looking at now is being made on a mid-2015 MacBook Pro. Even though it has a retina display, it does not have an HDR display. So the whites here, anything above 100, it's not able to, my actual MacBook Pro display cannot display it and it looks blown out. So how do we solve that problem? And the confusion <laughs> results from many people thinking, oh, you just need to do the color space override. Well, actually, that's not correct. So if we go over here and look at the right side of the screen, we click the little eye here and we'll see some settings. Now, by the way, if, if you do this and, and you don't see the same settings as mine, it's because you have to choose it in the pop-up down here. You can choose a, you know, different ones. It's not necessarily that settings, even though that I've used settings, settings isn't the only one you can use to accomplish this, but I suggest you use it to match up with what you see on my computer. So settings will give you these settings. Now, many people are thinking, oh, all I need to do is set color space override to Rec. 709. And of course, it, it, it brings down the levels, right? But look at my face, the color of my face. It looks desaturated. So yes, it will fix the blown out highlights. Okay, It'll bring it down properly between 0 and 100. But it's not the best thing to do for color. So in fact, you can leave it turned off. 
because, as I said, our library is locked to REC 709, our project is locked to REC 709, you don't need to use this color space override. Instead, you need to use what's called a camera LUT. All right, a camera LUT. Now, in this camera LUT, I have a third party LUTs that will do the conversion for us. Now, in my uh, this particular clip over here, P1569, I shot it in accordance with the Leeming LUT HLG version 8.01, which is the newest version as of March 2019. And so we will choose that. And it looks quite a bit darker, but don't worry about that for now. You can see all the highlights, they're not blown out now. And everything is here. And you can see color in my face. Okay. So the actual color space override and, and proper color adjustments are made with this LUT. You can get a free LUT. Uh, there's one that's called the Driftwood LUT. And I'll link to, the, to that LUT in the description below this video for you. But uh, the Leeming LUT, I did have to pay for it, but I think it's worth it. It's a little bit less yellow overall to my eyes than the Driftwood LUT. And since I have both, I can use both if I want to. But anyway, the Leeming LUT for Panasonic HLG, there are two versions. One is 8.01 and one is 5.02. They're different camera settings you have to use depending on which LUT you intend to use. The 502 is brighter. 801 crushes darks a little bit more. There's a whole video I can make on that. I won't go into it. But basically, the Leeming LUT is what I do for the color space conversion. And that's true, even though it still says this is REC 2020 HLG. It still will say that. But you can see I've done the color conversion. Now, if you have a lot of clips over here, you don't have to do them individually. You can just shift click and select them all and then choose your camera LUT and apply them, uh, apply it to all of your clips that are HLG. And in one fell swoop, boom it will adjust them all. So you don't have to do them individually. But if we look down here, okay, uh, we did the conversion basically, but it's still too dark. So what's the next step after that? And the next step is you want a color balance. Uh, you can use the automatic or, or the eyedropper. And I, I had used the eyedropper here. You wanna have a white card or a gray card, and then you can eyedrop that. And usually whenever you do color balance, which by the way, when you first choose it, it's called balanced color down here. You see this little magic wand pop up. You click it, choose color, balanced color. That will put balanced color here for you. You want to do that first and foremost, and that will brighten it a bit. But usually that's not bright enough. So the Leeming LUT uh, Quickie uh, can be applied as a custom LUT. And you say, oh, custom LUT. Didn't you just say that before? No, I didn't. Camera LUT is found in this little eye icon here. And that is what you use your primary Panasonic HLG for REC 709 color space conversion LUT, basically. You, you put that in your camera LUT. But over here, you click this little film icon here. Over here is where you would put your custom LUT. And that is if you want to brighten something or color it for a look, you can put a LUT in here. So for version 801 of the Leeming LUT, you really do need to brighten it, at least for me, I, I like it to be brighter. So boom, we add that. And you can see it brightened it up a little bit. And it's adjusted for Rec. 709. But we still, I, I still feel I wanted to grade more, so I did some color wheels, which brighten it, but it loses contrast, so I added a color curve. And to me, that looks pretty good, right? And you can see the color wheel settings here. I bumped up the highlights a little bit, pulled down the shadows a bit. I increased the saturation and I bumped up the midtones quite a lot. Um, and then, of course, the color curves. I put a mild S curve in there to regain back what I lost from the midtones. And that's really it. So I would say I'm done for this clip. Okay. And, and really, that's all there is to it. Uh, there's a lot more I could t talk about, but that is all there is to it. Now, if you want to go ahead and go up here to new, create a library, we'll call it Rec 2020. Because in this particular case, for this particular library, we want to set it to wide gamut HDR. All right. And so we have a event here. And we can actually take footage. And I can hold down the option key and copy it. 
and I won't do any optimizations or transcoding. And there's my clip. Okay. And we need a project, so I'll go up here. Now you can see we're given the option. Because the library itself is Rec 2020, you're given the option to set it as Rec 709 if you want to, or if you want to truly export to Rec 2020, then you can choose uh, one of these, even HLG specifically, if you want to do that. You can export to that. But if even if you choose that, because my display is not HDR, I won't be able to see it. Okay, so you, when you, whenever you want to export in Rec 2020 HDR, you really need to have a HDR display in order to, do, to see how it's actually going to look, right? But you could choose Rec 709 if you want to. That's fine. So I'll do that. So down here, this is going to be Rec 709. I'll go ahead and pull this clip down here. And here we go. So we go over here, and we see that I had already, you know, if, if you take away the LUT, then yeah, it's blown out again, right? So we're going to, in this case, choose the same LUT, but we're also going to choose Rec 709. Now, if we don't choose it, it's like that. If we choose it, it's like that. Again, off and on, off and on. You can see this changes up here. If we turn it off, this goes to HLG. On, Rec 709. So you can do that even though the R RGB parade isn't really changing to my eyes. Uh, because the library is R Rec 2020, even though your project is Rec 709, you might as well go ahead and put the color space override on here. When your library like this one is locked to Rec 709, you really don't have to worry about color space override because it's locked to Rec 709, even the library itself. So you're not going to make any mistakes that way. Uh, it's I would say, so, so my advice to you is you can avoid a lot of the confusion just by when you want to get your clip. You don't need to set color space override when your library is standard, which means not wide gamut, because you don't have to worry about it. When your library is a Rec 2020 and it's switchable, I would suggest just so that you avoid confusion, you probably want to set it to Rec 709 just to make sure. And then, of course, you, you still need to use your leaming LUT because if you don't, you see, <laughs> that's how it looks. So you still would want to have the leaming LUT or the, um, the driftwood LUT, a LUT that will really do the conversion for you. All right. And again, that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. So we'll open up this project once again. There's a lot of things you could say, well, how do I grade? How do I do that? But just do the steps. Once you do the color conversion, then you would go in, add your balance color, make sure your white balance is set up. After that, if you need a brightening quickie, then you can add that. But in all, you don't need that in all cases. For example, this clip over here that I have here, uh, balanced color, I'm not going to add the quickie. I've done the color wheels. It is, camera light isn't set up yet. This is a um, I've got version 5.2 LUT in here. So I didn't do a lot of major color corrections and color wheels, so you could add a LUT to brighten it if you want to, or you could just do your actual brightening in here. Maybe add an S-curve if you want to add a little bit of pop to it. But you can co color grade it once, uh, however you like. The point is, is that with the leaming LUT, if for those of you who are not already familiar, there's different versions of the LUT, so different camera settings are appropriate. You'll have to look at the documentation to know what I mean. 
based upon whether you're going to use version 5.2 or version 8.01. So I know that I shot this clip for version 5.02, and I shot this clip for version 8.01. Uh, the last thing I will say is that you can add more than one custom LUT, but the more custom LUTs you use, the more your performance in Final Cut Pro will suffer. So it's best if you don't use those at all, if you just do all of your color correcting with color wheels and color curves and so on, because that will maximize your performance. So I hope this video is helpful to let you know how to deal with Rec 2020 footage and it all comes down to this little eye symbol over here and camera LUT, which again is different from custom LUT. Custom LUT, in many cases, you may not need at all. But camera LUT is what you need. And most of the time, if, you're, if you've got a library Rec. 709 set, you, you don't need to worry about color space override. Even in the Rec. 2020 library, you probably don't need it, but I would say maybe you should do it for good measure just, just to make sure. Uh, because with this particular library, it lets you switch between wide gamut and non-wide gamut. Okay, so if you have any questions or uh, if you'd like to leave any feedback, uh, the comment section below is open to you and I'll try to engage you there. Thank you for watching and best wishes.